Hello and welcome to Sports Fan Entertainment here for a defensive roster analysis for the Tennessee Titans. It's been almost two months since I made the offensive roster analysis. And of course, we had to go get Julio freaking Jones after I did it. So I was like, let me get some more time just in case we end up doing something. But I'm pretty sure, hopefully, okay, that this will be our defensive roster for the most part. So let's go ahead and discuss it now. We all know it is no secret that the Tennessee Titans defense last year was an absolute damn disaster. It was miserable. It was terrible. And it was, oh, so nauseating to see throughout the entire season. But there is hope for this upcoming season. And this is something that I'm very much so looking forward to. So with that said, let's go ahead and start with the defensive line where we have to start with my boy, Big Jeff. Simmons. This needs to be the year for him. Now, he's already fantastic, but this is the year he needs to get the national recognition. I need to see this man in the Pro Bowl. I need to hopefully even see this man on the All-Pro team and solidify himself as one of the top interior defensive linemen in the league and a budding star. We all know, see, and believe in Jeffrey Simmons. We know the talent that he possesses, and not only the talent, but the actual performance on the football field, one of those rare times where both of those sink for us in a player, and we see it in Jeffrey Simmons. I expect big things from big Jeff Simmons, but it continues there. As for the first time to me in maybe five plus years, I really believe this, we have two legitimate scary people on the defensive line because for me it was either Casey and then there's really no one else and then Simmons got here but then there was no longer Casey, you know, just for like a tad but I think Casey was there but they didn't play, you know, together at all really. But now there is a legitimate second option on the defensive line for the first time in five years. I really believe that. I was never into her body, but I was never really into Daquan Jones. I wanted to be in Austin Johnson. We never saw. But Danico Autry. Okay, now we're talking. This guy is going to add something to this unit. The former Indianapolis Colts to assign. In this free agency period. This man is going to be able to get out to the quarterback. He's going to be able to help stop the run. And he's going to alleviate pressure off Jeffrey Simmons. Which is why, again, I'm expecting a pro, well, maybe even all pro season from Jeffrey Simmons. And then we also still have some decent options on the defensive line beyond them. Not great. We need to see more from some young players. Rashad Weaver, he was one of the draft picks from this year. Laurel Murchison. I talked a lot about last year, and I didn't hype him up too much because, you know, I, you guys know I don't like to hype up late round draft picks, but I was like, eh, I see a little Jarrell Casey. Well, I saw nothing on the field at all. I, he barely existed on the defensive line this season. So we're really talking about those two, and that's like it when you're talking about the defensive line. Now, right now, we're scheduled to start. I don't even know who it uh, knows tackle. It may end up being Naquan Jones because Daquan Jones is not on the team anymore. So we have Naquan Jones, Tyre Tart. I mean, who cares? Uh, hopefully someone else can do something. But, you know, in a 3-4, having two very good offensive linemen, someone else should be able to do some things. But if we can sign someone that, you know, gets released, I'd be into that at nose tackle. So let's look out for that. Let's move on to the linebacking unit. And this is going to be, to me, a very critical unit and maybe even the most critical because I feel like I know what to expect from the defensive line. And even though I won't know what to expect uh, play to play week to week from the secondary, but I expect that. But the linebackers, are they going to be able to take a step forward? Because this is still a young unit. Okay, so let's start with Harold Landry, who is entering a contract year. And he is right on the edge where I'm not sure he's going to be resigned by this team right now. I'm not so sure. It depends on what he's demanding. And right now, based on his productivity in his NFL, NFL career, I don't think he could demand much. I don't think he deserves too much right now. So let's say he explodes for a 10-plus sack season. Sheesh. Now we got to pay him and Bud Dupree, you know, a lot of money there. Are we going to do that? Do we want to do that? I don't know. It's going to be very interesting. But I'm still going to be rooting him on to do that because it increases our chances of winning. And that's what I care about right now because we really do have that Super Bowl window now that Julio Jones has entered the building. So hopefully we get a step forward and maybe even a Pro Bowl appearance from Harold Landry. You look at Bud 
Dupree, the former Pittsburgh Steeler. Now, we need him to be more consistent. We need him to ascend to being a premier pass rusher in the NFL. He has the talent. We saw it in Pittsburgh, but he wasn't able to be consistent coming also off of an ACL injury. That is something to keep track of, something to look out for. I'm still very mixed on him, especially considering the fact that we're paying him, like, what, $18 million a year? I mean, sheesh, for a guy that's not a proven premier pass rusher yet, you know, I don't know. But he still has a lot of potential left within him. He's a guy that changed positions, I want to say, early in college. A guy that's still not a natural pass rusher, but definitely coming into his zone. So I love all that. If he can, you know, turn into a little bit of a smarter player, you know, teach him to hold the edge a little bit better, be a little better against the run, this could really be a great player for us and really help us in this defense. But at the very least, he's definitely an upgrade over what we had last year whenever Clowney wasn't on the field, which was pretty much all of the season. Okay, so that's at least something that we have right there. We look at the inside linebackers. We look at Rashawn Evans. Now, I'm done. With Rashawn Evans. I'm sorry. Uh, he's just not very good. Now, he's good at, you know, little situations, you know, third and goal, fourth and goal. He was showed up for us beautifully in the, what was it, 2018 playoffs and even leading up to those playoffs and critical plays. Oh, but that's his move, and that's his only move. Okay, that's his only move. He doesn't have, he's not a versatile linebacker. He can't cover very well. He can't run to the outside, cover outside runs very well at all. Can't really get out of the quarterback, which is surprising because he did this very well at Alabama. Now, maybe with a better pass rush around him, now that we've added Bud Dupree, now that we've added Nico Autry, now that Harold Landry has money to fight for, and if they get more sacks, maybe he'll get more sacks as a result. Perhaps. But I haven't seen it. I don't really buy it. You know, his NFL speed's not great. His athleticism isn't great. His strength isn't great. So what, what is he there for? He just, he's a flame out. I mean, that's what he is at this point. I don't think he's going to be in the league in two years. I, I think three years he's out of the league. I think two years he's on the practice squad again. Three years he's out of the league. That's what I'm seeing. I really don't think he's much of a, of a complete linebacker in the league. I really don't believe that at this point. It's sad. I really don't believe that at this point. Avery Williamson is barely in the league, by the way. Remember when I told you he was average? So, that's what's going on with Sean Evans. Now, Jayon Brown, I still believe in. And I can't believe we got him back for the price we got him for. I want to say $5.5 million. Oh, that's a steal that I'll take any single day of the week. So, Jayon Brown is coming back for that figure. And hopefully, he can secure a long-term contract of his own this upcoming season. Although, I guess I shouldn't want that because I want him back for cheap again. Because we're already paying so many guys. It's ridiculous out here. But Jayon Brown, definitely the best inside linebacker that we have. Now, David Long Jr. Now, this guy continues to make plays whenever he's in the game. Uh, now, he doesn't play the same role as Rashawn Evans. So, that's why we don't play him over Rashawn Evans. He plays mostly instead for, in, in space stead, for Jayon Brown, right? Whenever Jayon Brown is out. So, it's intriguing um, how we're going to get him on the football field more. I want to see him out there, you know. And we, unfortunately, we don't have more of... Now, Monty Rice could actually fulfill the role that, uh, that I guess, Rashawn Evans is supposed to be filling and help get after the pass rusher and... Or get after the passer, sorry. Be able to help with the pass rush. So, we can't wait to see what Monty Rice does, the rookie that we got out of Georgia in the draft. Although, I wasn't a big fan of his tape, but I'll still give him a shot. Right, so there is potential. We're still very young units, right? Rashawn Evans is the most, or maybe David Long, actually, not David Long, sorry. Jayon Brown is the most veteran of this unit, and he is now going into his fifth year, right? So we're still very young here. Need to see improvement. Need to see smarter play from these inside linebackers this coming season. And then we move on to the secondary, where we have a very intriguing situation going on here. Now, let's start with the cornerbacks. Although you do see Kevin Byard picture. Let's start with the cornerbacks. Now, Janoris Jenkins. Be prepared for ups and downs as it pertains to Janoris Jenkins. I'm warning you right now. He is so inconsistent. I mean, there is a reason why the Giants let him go, the Saints let him go, the Rams let him go. That's what he does. He'll give you great plays. He'll give you horrible plays. He takes a lot of risks. And our safeties aren't fast enough to put up with that. Like Kevin Byer, when he's on, he's pretty good, but he ain't fast. Okay, he'll never be fast. Never particularly fast, right? So if Je Janoris Jenkins is going to make some mistakes, okay, well, we're going to get beat over the top because Kevin Byer ain't going to catch up. I'm on the hook, ain't going to catch up. And then that's it. We'll be for another touchdown by Will Fuller, who I think is gone, thank God, uh, or some other T.Y. Hilton or something, okay? And we don't want that. 
So hopefully Janora Jenkins is more on than off, but expect both. Now, Caleb Farley, will he be healthy? I don't know. Don't ask me. I'm not a doctor. I don't know what to expect from Caleb Farley, but if he's on the field, I expect some ups and downs as well. I mean, I talked about his tape, and I might do a tape analysis on him because we have plenty of time this offseason to do so. He takes some risks. Um, he doesn't often locate the ball. He often plays the receiver instead of playing the ball. So that's something that I'm a little bit concerned about him. But he has great measurables, great physicality. Uh, you know, he should be able to improve quickly in the NFL. But if you're asking him to be great rookie year, yeah, you might be a little concerned about that. Because last I checked, everyone was talking about how great Jeffrey Okuda was. He was the number three overall pick in the draft last year. He was a complete cornerback. And he stunk. Okay, he was terrible his rookie year. It's his rookie year. So, I mean, he still has plenty of time, but you can't expect much from these rookie cornerbacks. So, Caleb Farley's there. Now, outside of that, I mean, we just have a bunch of question marks, guys that we don't know what to expect from, guys that are young. We saw what happened last season. So, Chris Jackson, we have Christian Fulton as well. I guess Jackson's better right now. He was a seven-round pick last year. I guess he's better. I guess. Now, Christian Fulton, I loved his tape coming out of college. He disappointed me last year. He got the big interception. It didn't really pop off outside of that. It wasn't terrible, but definitely wasn't good. So I want to see improvement there. Now, just in terms of names, I love the trio of Caleb Farley, Janoris Jenkins, and if he is what we think he is, Christian Fulton. That's a great one, two, three trio on paper. But none of them have really done anything on the football field consistently. Jenkins is the one that's done the most, and again, he's inconsistent. And they're young, the other two. So who knows? I mean, that's just, it's very questionable. But the secret to the secondary is Kevin Byard. At least he's a big part of it. Let's say that. He needs to return to 2017, 18, 19 form. I don't know what BS was on the football field last year. It was ridiculous. I don't want to see it again. We need Kevin Byard in 2017, 18, 19 form. That's where we need him. Now, with the better pass rush, I expect this. Because again, Kevin Byard is not great physically. He's not particularly fast. He's not particularly strong, but he is smart, okay? So now we have a better pass rush. He'll be able to make wiser decisions and not have to just rely upon his physicality because the quarterbacks in front of him stink and because the pass rush in front of him isn't doing anything. So I expect improvement. I do expect him to return to pretty much 2017, 18, 19 form and for that to be solved. Amani Hooker, he is now sliding up to the strong safety position starting. I love him. He was really one of the bright spots of the defense last season, one of the few. So excited for that. Uh, we'll see what Dane Crookshank is able to do behind him. He should get more playing time. I'm not expecting too much, but there is that. And then we also have, and that's pretty much it. Uh, also, we also drafted Elijah Molden. We'll see what he does. I'm not expecting too much. From him out of the secondary, but we'll see. I'm intrigued. I did like his tape, and he's also apparently been playing a little bit of safety. So cornerback and safety there. We'll we'll see where they play him more at this upcoming season. Brady Breeze. I'm not sure if he'll make the team, but if he makes the team, that'll be it. So when you look at this defensive unit, again, it was one of the worst last year. I mean, really, it was the worst. I don't care who ranked worse. It was the worst. I, mean, I, I saw no defense last year that was worse than ours. The pass rush was historically awful until like two weeks left into the season. Okay, it was re really bad. So with that said, I'm expecting this defense to be anywhere from, I would say, league average at best. That's at best, by the way. So 16th to 20. If it's bad, like it's just not clicking. Bud Dupree's not doing enough. You know, we deal with some injuries. 24th. You know, if it's worse than that, oh my God. Oh, the frustration. But it really should be better because we lost Adore Jackson, but he didn't really play much last year, right? So it's not a big loss. And then we added in Danico Atri. We added in Bud Dupree. You're exp we added in Janor Jenkins in plays for Adore Jackson. So with all of that, I mean, how can this defense be worse? How can it be the same? It has to improve. I mean, if it doesn't improve, I, I, Shane Bone, you got to get out of here. And I'm the first ticket out of here. I mean, my God, I'll kick his ass myself. I'll head down to LP Field, Nissan Stadium, whatever the hell they want to call it, and I'll open up a bottle of whip ass on Shane Bowen if this defense ain't good by week five. Okay, at least better by week five. Mike, and, and even Mike Vrabel, I mean, you're a defensive coach. I mean, he had a horrible defense in Houston, by the way. He was, they were ranked 32nd, and now you're saying why. I told you he's not a great defensive coordinator, but he is a great head coach. I didn't believe that. So hopefully this defense improves, because if it does, if it could just be, if it could be league average, if it could be 16th, Bro, Julio and Derrick Henry and A.J. Brown and Ryan Tannehill and this offensive 
Bro, Super Bowl might be on the way. We're going to need this defense to limit Patrick Holmes. Now, again, I'm expecting this defense because we're just so young, relying on these young players in the secondary to just not be good enough at the end of the day. But I'm still way more excited for the defense this year than I was last year. So there goes my thoughts on the Tennessee Titans 2021 defensive roster. What are your thoughts? Comment down below. I want to know if you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, comment, and most importantly, to subscribe. But until next time, this has been MJ of Sports Fan Entertainment. And I'm out. See you all later. Thank you.